The ultimate trumpet mouthpiece comparison. I'm going to be reviewing all the Bach trumpet mouthpiece cups from A, B, C, D, E, F. You've never seen this before. This is going to be awesome. I'm Kurt Thompson, trumpet teacher, trumpet player, and brass coach, and you are at my channel, your brass instructor. Okay, the couple of things that we're going to talk about in this video today will be, first, we're going to be taking a look at some of the pictures that I took of all these mouthpieces. I've never seen all the cup sizes in one spot. I mean A, B, C, D, E, F. Personally, I've only tried the C, the E. I've only tried the C and the E cups versions of the Bach trumpet mouthpieces. I haven't tried the A, B, or the D or the F. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you some pictures that indeed I have these mouthpieces. That's going to be number one. Number two, we're going to go ahead and put these mouthpieces to a test and we're going to try to make the test equal for all mouthpieces. In other words, I'm going to play the same thing, but on each different mouthpiece. Third, we're going to wrap it up and I'm going to give you my opinion on each mouthpiece and what it might mean for you. So stick around. Please go over to Patreon, become a supporter, Support my channel and my work and what I'm doing. I really need your help. Thank you so much. This is Kurt Thompson. And here we go. So are you ready? Are you ready to hear and see something you've never seen or heard before? All Bach trumpet mouthpiece cups in one sitting. You ready? First, I'm gonna use my control mouthpiece. Now this is the mouthpiece I play on all the time. It's a custom hybrid mouthpiece from Bob Reeves and we're gonna go ahead and use this first. I'm gonna do a triple G scale from low to double high G. I'm gonna do it rather slow and put a couple of breaths in there. That way you can hear the notes as they go by. So first my normal mouthpiece. play my normal mouthpiece. The first Bach cup size that I'm going to try today will be the Bach 3F. Let's see what happens. And keep in mind I'm going to try to make this a very true blue test by playing the same exact thing as we work our way into the basement and into the bathtub. Here we go. This is the Bach 3F, as of F as in Frank. Next is our good friend, the Bach 3E trumpet mouthpiece, which you already know my opinion about from a previous video, a tutorial and review. The Bach 3E.
I already know I like this mouthpiece. Here we go. mouthpiece is the Bach 3D. D is in David. I've never seen one of these in person and I've never played on one of these D cup mouthpieces ever. Yeah. The next mouthpiece is the quintessential iconic Bach 5C. How many of you guys right now and gals play on a 5C? Raise your hand. Uh, is that you in the back you play and then over here, the side of the auditorium? All right, we do have a couple of people in the audience that actually play on a Bach 5C. So, season Charlie, and I'm actually just kind of joking here, but really, I bet a lot of you raised your hand. Well, let's not waste any more time. Let's go ahead and give the Bach 5C Season Charlie a run for its money. Many of you play on this mouthpiece, so I hope you enjoy this. I felt the double G get to be a little bit harder with the 5C. I still got it, but it did seem, it doesn't feel as comfortable as my mouthpiece. I, I bet you guys could hear that right there, right? Yeah. Moving on. We are now going deep, deep down into parking level two. <laughs> Way down in the garage. This is the Bach 5B. B as in boy. First time to hold one of these, first time to actually see one of these. I've never played on one before. I don't think I've ever heard anybody play on one before. But it looks like we could probably go swimming from, from the, the depth of that cup. It looks like we could do a little bit of swimming in there. And this mouthpiece is cold. This is gonna be fun. Let's give it a whirl and a twirl. Bach 5B as in boy. Double G on the Bach 5B, B as in boy. I don't know about you guys. I'm not hearing a huge difference in the upper register, but I feel like my low register, which I'm not really called 
I don't know if you guys know this. I'm, if I do something, if I play somewhere on my own, or someone calls me to play, or, or whatever, it's never to play below the staff. I mean, that's just that's just the truth. But, um, you know, in another life, if my range wasn't as good, I could probably play on one of these deeper mouthpieces and be a really good second or third trumpet player in a symphony, you know? Anyway, I digress. Let's move on. Okay, can somebody um, uh, turn around, will you? Just turn around. Because I'm going to go ahead and get my beach towel, my beach ball, take off my shirt, get the sunscreen, my sunglasses, my flip-flops, and uh, I got some swimming trunks underneath these shorts here. And we're going to go swimming. <laughs> wow. This is the Bach 5A. 5A. A is an apple. Five A, trumpet players. I've never felt this one in my hands. I've never played on it. I've never seen it. I don't think I've ever seen anybody play one. Now I haven't searched anybody on YouTube if they play this, but um, I should have a beach towel, beach ball, sunglasses, sunscreen, the whole thing. You know, shark repellent, <laughs> a spear. Um, because we're about wow. <laughs> Can you see me at the end of, can you see me through the mouthpiece? I mean, that hole is big. <laughs> I bet you can see my pretty face through this mouthpiece, right? Wow. I mean, I'm just looking at that, just catching light coming through it. Wow. I will admit to you right now, this is going to be the largest trumpet mouthpiece I've ever played, ever tried to play, ever held in my hands. A Bach 5A. Oh my goodness. You blow into it, all your air goes out right away. Okay. This is really going to test my execution of all three stages of breath compression, I can tell you that. I may have to take more than a couple of breaths. We'll see what happens. I mean, this thing is huge. Probably use it for trombone. Mm, that key sounds nice. Would you like to hear me do that last octave again? G to double G? High G to double G? Yeah, let's try it. Let me see if I can get it in one breath. Wow. I feel like I'm at the gym at all the weights in the entire gym or on each side of the barbell, just weighing me down. So today you saw some close-up pictures of the entire ensemble of all the Bach trumpet mouthpiece cup sizes from A, B, C, D, E, F. We got into the test, the demonstration, the comparison, using my trusty, well-worn Bob Reeves custom mouthpiece as a control in this type, if you want to call this an experiment. You can rewind the video, you can go back and hear how I sounded on this. I feel like I sounded best on this for what I do. I'll make, I'll make this point again. I don't make my living teaching or playing below low C. I make it playing in using the upper part of this, this inside of the staff and way on above. And I feel like this mouth because I sound the best uh, for doing that. Okay, so I started off with my Bob Reeves. You guys have already heard me play on that one, and you're not gonna be able to get that mouthpiece anyway. It's a chopped up hybrid cut of, of an old mouthpiece and Bob Reeves mouthpiece. Uh, it, they don't exist, and you won't be able to get one, and I don't think, um, for some of the students that have played on it, and a guy that uh, was playing split lead with me not too long ago tried it, he hated it, couldn't play on it, so it's a wacky weird mouthpiece. So let's move on to the Bach trumpet mouthpieces.
This is the Bach 3F that I tried first. I don't know, you want to hear something weird? I didn't really like the Bach 3F, as F is in Frank. Um, supposedly, the cup is a little bit more shallow, right? Um, I don't know. Oddly enough, I like the 3E better, which is odd because this is a 3F, so it's not like a 5F, but um, it's a 3F, and I actually like the 3E better than this one anyway, so take that for what it's worth. You may fall in love with the 3F, but I highly recommend you try it. It was a decent mouthpiece, unusual, not as shallow as this guy. So you're probably wondering, no, the Bach 5F is not as shallow. So I'm just revealing uh, my kryptonite here. This is more shallow. It's very wide. This one's about as wide as the probably the one the one rim on on the Bach um, ladder of sizes. I would say this is probably as wide as a Bach one. But uh, no, it's more shallow than the F. Now we should go to the 3E. I don't have to say too much about that. Here's the 3E. Well, there's a pre previous review video tutorial on the 3E, and I'm not gonna say a whole lot. I think that you guys could probably tell when I played on it, I felt better, more confident, I sounded better, at least to myself. I like the 3E. I don't play on the 3E, but this is the number one best overall trumpet mouthpiece that anybody can get. Not specific. Now, if you're a pro, you're probably not playing on this. Maybe you are, maybe you aren't. I'm saying for somebody who hasn't found the perfect mouthpiece and spent hundreds or even thousands of dollars, this is the best all-around mouthpiece, macroscopic, for someone to be on when they don't really know what they want or they haven't found it. So but that that's all I'm gonna say about the Bach 3E, great mouthpiece. Here we go with the Bach 3D. I thought the 3D was pretty cool. In fact, let me just do it one more time. I, I enjoy the 3D. In between the 3C and the 3E. Yeah, this 3D, I'm liking it. In another life, I probably would have maybe used something like this and stayed in a chamber or symphonic organization. So uh, that's the, that's the um, 3D. This is the 5C. Okay, hear me play the 5C. Now this is probably one of the most common mouthpieces for most people to play on, at least the trumpet players that I've met in my life. In fact, we could do another video that would cost a lot of money. We can go to the top 10 music schools um, that are classically oriented. Well, most of them are anyway. So anyway, yeah, if we ask quite a number of professional classical players and professors, a lot of them might tell you that they play on the Bach 5C. It's just one of the most common, decent mouthpieces that I've heard and found that people play on. The Bach 5B, my impression was, it was a good mouthpiece, but it, it would never be anything practical for what I have to do. Let's hear the Bach 5B, B as a boy one time. I mean, maybe um, when I get to be about 90 years old and I'm playing in an old timey, you know, three, four or five piece jazz ensemble. Um, I think I get a pretty good sound on it. It's big. A 5B, B as a boy, folks, is big. And it's not likely that you're going to be able to use this in most of the stuff that you do. But if you are a person that just enjoys playing third and fourth part um, in any ensemble, or you like to play uh, Dixieland, 
Okay, so enough about the 5B, 5A. I bet you guys want to hear me do this one more time, right? 5A. 5A. Well, what can I say about the 5A? I mean, it has a huge throat, huge backboard. Um, it seems wide to me, but it could be that because the, tup, the, the cup is just about as deep as could be. Um, it really is an amazingly large mouthpiece. You heard that I struggled trying to get up to that double G and actually put some, some meat on the bones, power. So we could play it again. I feel like it does make me sound better for the classical stuff, but I don't make my living playing or teaching the classical stuff uh, like I did when you know I was in college. So, I mean, yeah, and I'm not gonna go out there. You're not gonna see me anywhere in the next couple of years just playing the Carnival of Venice or the Hummel or the Haydn. Um, we got thousands of players around the world that can do that. In fact, even some of my high school students, the All-Staters, can actually get a piece of some of those. But it does have a very nice tone in the low register. Wow, I sound the best in the middle of the staff and all the way down to below the staff on this 5A. I mean, I wish you could be here, it sounds good. But I'm not gonna go out and, um, I'm not gonna, I'm gonna send this back probably. I'm not gonna keep it because I'm just not going to be able to use this kind of mouthpiece for the stuff that I do. Uh, like I said, another million years when I hit 90, and I really can't play above the staff. Maybe I'll get one of these guys and um, you'll pass me in the hotel lobby someday over in, in Korea or Japan and I'll be doing this. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this first one-of-a-kind Bach trumpet mouthpiece cup comparison for all the cups of the Bach trumpet mouthpiece lineup. A, B, C, D, E, F. I really enjoyed doing this for you guys. It was very interesting for me. I was curious about some of these cup sizes I've never heard, heard of before until I started thinking about doing this um, video review for you guys. Um, if you're not happy with the mouthpiece you're playing on, there are a lot of mouthpieces in different cup sizes. I highly recommend that you go out, have some fun like I did, and try a couple of these different mouthpieces. And by the way, you probably didn't even realize, I'm still, I still have the Bach large bore commercial trumpet Stradivarius in my hands, and um, I'm really enjoying it. So I did all this. In fact, some people might say, hey, you did it the right way because you heard the Bach trumpet mouthpiece, which is supposedly supposed to go into a Bach trumpet. So there you have it, right? Bach trumpet mouthpieces, all the cup sizes, and they went into a brand new Bach large bore commercial trumpet. So I'm Kurt Thompson. I hope that you got a lot out of this. If you did, why not, why not give one of these things, you know? Do uh, you have a question or comment about what you saw in this video? Drop me a comment right there. I'll do my best to get you to get back to you maybe in a couple days up to about a week. And finally, if you'd like to see more of these types of videos or if you'd like to see some wacky videos or entertaining videos or me performing, um, all kinds of stuff or people talking about me and how it was working with me in my courses or lessons, become a subscriber. You're gonna have a lot of fun here at Your Brass Instructor. I'm Kurt Thompson and I will see you in the next one.